How many of you guys heard that password? Y'all gonna come and listen to my internet now? Oh, you guys are offline. Uh, we were? Okay, good. Oh, that's right, because he was switching over the Wi-Fi. Good, because Anthony's sitting here and saying the, the, the password to my Wi-Fi, and I'm like, you realize there's a, a ton of people coming on right now. <laughs> You're just announcing it to the world. So, made me laugh. Okay, guys, welcome to the call. Uh, we're going to get started here in a sec. I'm watching y'all come in and the, the numbers growing really fast. Um, it's a super exciting day. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this call, uh, especially since my, uh, sister is going to be on the call. She's going to be talking about releasing and her experience with releasing over the last few months. Um, I got her started in it about what's three months ago or six months ago. How long ago was it? December, January, February, March, April, May, like six months ago. Six months ago, and her life has changed a lot, guys. She's really dug deep. She's taken it serious, and um, and so um, and so it's going to be interesting to hear her story as to what it's done for her. Um, is my other sister on the call too? Chris, or you better be on this call. <laughs> <laughs> Becky's going to kick your ass if you're not. So, so I don't see anything in the chat from you. So. Uh, no, she's not here yet. I'll, I'll keep an eye out. He said oh, there she, she is. She's down there. I see her. Okay. Um, should I allow Chris to talk? <laughs> um, okay. Do you guys. allow her? Yeah. Yeah. There's a little her. button on here. that says allow to talk. So <laughs> um, she's like, so if you say anything about Chris, I'll have to let her in the call. <laughs> so she can de she can defend herself. <laughs> I know she's feeling she's she's laughing right now. She's typing in the chat. If you could see. It. <laughs> Uh oh. Hmm. I'm here ready. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to get started now, guys. And um, welcome to the call. We've already got 53 of you and growing. Um, this is exciting. We're going to be getting back into also uh, just a little commercial for you guys. We're going to be doing more of these free calls about two a week starting uh, after next weekend. We're going to be doing regular two week calls for you guys, webinars, uh, just bringing you more content that you guys want to see. And all kinds of stuff from personal growth to the dating stuff to um, building confidence to uh, releasing everything that you guys, uh, you know, developing more self-love, purpose. We definitely, I definitely want to do a call on both of those, developing self-love and purpose because you guys both, uh, you're all, you're all so into that stuff. But that's what releasing is all about. Releasing is, the whole purpose of releasing is developing self-love. That was originally created for was to put self-love in every part of your life. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, I do love me some purpose, somebody wrote. So Jay wrote that. So that's a good, good, that's a good response. Now, uh, uh, Cairo, I think we need to mute you because we're getting some background noise. I think that's you every time I. Yep, there we go. It's much better now. Okay, uh, so Becky, welcome to uh, the call from your beautiful home. What does that sign say over your right shoulder? Um, heat restores my soul. Nice. Heat? Heat, heat, heat. Psalm, oh, okay. Psalm 23. Okay, I thought you said heat. Okay. <laughs> well, that too. That, that so, does it. Awesome. So uh, it's a good little saying. I kept re trying to read it, and I was like, I can see the restores and soul, my soul, but I couldn't see the rest of it. The mirror image. Yeah. It actually shows to the audience usually uh, straight. It just shows back to you, mirror image. Mm. So I, I can read it. And, um, <clears throat> so let's dive in. Um, so Becky, um, we basically grew up in a, in a, in a, in an emotionally repressed household, right? Would you agree? Yeah. So mm -hmm. emotions weren't very, we, we were, you know, I, I know I grew up numbing myself and, and I was always accused of like disappearing and emotionally disappearing and releasing really helped set me free. My life changed a lot with releasing. I healed a mm -hmm. lot. I'm still healing and, uh, emotionally and physically, phys a lot of physical healing. For you, I remember it was about six months ago, and I've always wanted to get you and Chris more into this stuff, and I've given Chris books over the years and things like that, and I think the, the real key here was, was when I asked you to join a releasing workshop about six months ago, you had a, and you were going through some stuff at that time, and, and um, can you share a little bit about, A, your history um, growing up that got you to where you were at, and then um, what got you into the releasing workshop? Okay. Um yeah, so yeah, we did have a it was it was an emotional roller coaster, just you know, growing up in our home. And um I, I felt like it was my job to keep everybody uh under control, you know. 
and kind of keep that. I, I just wanted quiet. All I wanted to do was peace. And it just, I, I just, I, I just remember saying to myself when I was a kid, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to, I'm not going to be anything like mom. And I'm, my household is going to be quiet. Like it's going to be, it's going to be what I want it to be, you know? Um, and so I felt like I had to be the opposite of her. And I, I like for the longest time, I would say, um, I am never going to be like my mother. Like that was my, I was so focused on her that I was becoming her, you know, almost. Um, and so, you know, just a lot of years. You kind of became the opposite of her. Well, for a while I was creating the same life. I remember right out of high school. I remember, um, the first couple of boyfriends that I had, if you remember, uh, you know, Rick and I don't know, it's just, it was very, it was chaos. And I, I remember thinking, you know what, I am becoming my mother. So it was like a flip, a switch flipped and I'm going to be in control. And so from that point on, I was just always in my head, you know, I had a lot of therapy to deal with my mother issues. Um, you know, and one of the things they did teach me in therapy was to quit focusing on your mother and otherwise you're going to become just like her because <laughs> you yeah. are so focused on her. Yeah. It's, it's magic how that happens. And, and the in the head part is to cut off from your emotions. We get in our head. And if any of you are stuck accused of being in your head, it's to not feel all the stuff that's stored in your body. So you, at that moment, you decided to go into your head to get away from feelings. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about focusing on, um, uh, what did, how did you phrase it? You phrase it, did you stop focusing on your mother? You're going to be just like her. Is that what, the, yeah. what you said? Yeah. I have a brother that's on, uh, cause we have different fathers and that's on my father's side who did that very thing. He focused so much on being angry at my father that he is exactly like my father and he, and he didn't grow up with him at all. He didn't even know him hardly. And when I went to meet him, I was like, God, you sound like him. You look like him. You talk like him. Yet you have never spent any real time around him. This is magic. It's like amazing. And my, my little sister who was raised on my father's side, same thing. She's like, it's dad. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And he hated that, of course. So um, yeah. continue on. I just wanted to say, share how powerful that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I, um, and because in the home where we grew up, I was the oldest. So it was sort of, I was the, I was the mother almost. I was mom's mom. I was you know, raising her kids for her. And so I don't know, it just took on that role of just enabler, you know, kind of, um, and, uh, kind of, kind of took that into adulthood. Um, but all I wanted was my own family and I wanted to feel loved, which I never did growing up. You want to, yeah. what do you mean by enabler when you say that? Um, just taking care of everybody, trying to keep everybody happy. You know, that was sort of what I, what I wanted to do, you know, I just, I wanted my mother to be happy. I wanted, I felt like if mom's happy, then we'll, we'll you know, we'll have a happy home. I wasn't very good at it. I, I could, <laughs> I wasn't able to keep her happy. Um, and, and yet there was this resentment that I felt at the same time, you know, yeah. that I didn't get to be a kid, that I, you know, had all this responsibility and I, you know, so growing up, I, I tended to always recreate that. Like I get in these situations where I had all this responsibility and I resented it. It was like, I was recreating that same scenario all through my life, even, yeah. into, even into my marriage. So. And so you, you, you continued on being the enabler, as you called it, the one who wants to take care of everybody and on onto every mar your marriage and, yeah. and, you know, raising your children, that kind of stuff. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then my last memory really of you when we were living together, because you, you had turned 18. I remember that. Um, you, it was the house that we had on Columbine street Columbine. And, uh, you came home, mom yelled at you and you said something like I'm 18. Now you can't tell me what to do. And you moved out and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that very totally how it went. I don't, <laughs> something like that. I remember what room we were in. I remember where you were sitting. I remember um, you were done. Yeah. You got well, I done. just, I was just, I just remember being yelled at all the time. I just felt like I was always getting yelled at, you know? Um, anytime I had feelings or I wanted to do something for myself, it was, it was called selfish. I mean, that was sort of the family theme, right? Yeah. And, um, 
it was just considered selfish to take care of yourself or to do anything that made you happy. So I really didn't know how to make myself happy and I felt guilty about it. Like if I, like that's a selfish thing to do, right? You have to think about everyone else first before you think about yourself. Yeah, our, our mother, you guys know our mother's uh, bipolar. And so she had a lot of emotional outbursts and she would yell a lot to get under control. And then what was her main mechanism for control? Guilt. Guilt, yeah. It was yeah. wonderful that you would say that. Because that was the same thing. I had to release some tons of guilt. Guilt is all pervasive and it's all through our lives. Um, yeah. People don't realize how much we feel guilty. Um, yeah. and, uh, and guilt being that she used guilt as a control mechanism, uh, it made us more susceptible or me, and you can say if it's the same for you, susceptible to guilt in the world. Mm-hmm. The littlest thing happened, immediately I felt guilty. So an example of this, just so you guys know on a releasing level is, and, and you can probably relate to this, Becky, how deep it goes is, you walk down the street, you see a police car. Do you immediately look around to see if you did something wrong? Do you immediately feel oh, yeah. um, you're guilty? You know, that, that's, that's guilt that's running through your system. You bump into somebody, do you immediately feel guilty or do you just apologize and not feel guilty? You don't have to feel guilty. You can just apologize. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. And, uh, or you can feel like, oh, I did something wrong. And that's mm-hmm. the difference. You don't want to feel like you did something wrong all the time. Um, and so, so in, in your life, how much of your life was spent defending this, this sense of guilt, this feeling they were doing something wrong and trying to correct it. That's why we typically do the whole, um, as you, uh, um, codependency kind of thing where you're, you're trying to take care of everybody. Yeah. And in fact, you know, I was married briefly at 23 and, uh, he passed away like within the first, you know, eight weeks of our relationship. And I felt like somehow Amazing. that was, I, I love Mark a lot. He was a great guy. So. Yeah. And he, I felt like somehow that was uh, my, I was being punished that I had um, not done enough or something I had done wrong. It was my fault. You know, it had to somehow be my fault and uh, you know, it was a complete accident, but you know, I brought it on, you know, and I was like, being selfish. Your somehow. fault that he, that he passed away accidentally, uh, you know, from his job. And um, yeah. And you were married for four months, I believe. No, eight weeks. Eight weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were married a very short time. Two months. Two months. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I and I and I felt like you know, I yeah, I it was it was my fault yeah. that you know I brought it on. God was punishing me. So. So how and did you carry that guilt up and do you still carry that guilt? Have you released it? No, I, I don't. I don't carry that guilt. I I don't feel like that you know anymore. But I think uh, I became. Uh, I became extremely fearful after that. Like it was an accident. And mm-hmm. I thought, wow, I can't do, I can't, I have to control my life. And I, I couldn't control that. You know, there was a feeling like going into, you know, all throughout my childhood growing up that I needed to control everybody and everything. And that was something that I couldn't control. It happened outside of my control. And so then the life became very uh, unpredictable. And I, and God became very unpredictable and I was afraid of God and I was afraid of, you know, what was going to happen in my life if I didn't, you know, hop to kind of, you know, like get, yeah. get it together. So, so God was going to punish you. So yeah. You the, so this whole idea that God is, it's more the old Testament, not the new Testament kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That God is this wrathful being and you need yeah. to do what he does. Okay. And, um, and so then you, you move forward and you, um, then you end up getting meeting somebody else and getting married. Yeah. Remember, you had a very controlled life. Everything was by the book mm-hmm. and controlled and perfect. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, you did the, there was, you know, you kept the chaos out, but you also mm-hmm. numbed out all the emotions is what I remember. And is that correct? Yeah. 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 Well, I, I got a lot of therapy after, you know, my first marriage and the, and the death and everything. Um, and I came to terms with, okay, God's not punishing me, but I did, meet somebody because I just wanted someone who I felt safe with. Uh, he was very in, I, I liked that he was so in control. I was very attracted to the fact that he, he was under, he had everything under control. You know, his car was immaculate, you know, I don't know. There was just everything in his life was just at right angles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, everything flowed exactly the way he wanted it to. And you know. so you were chasing safety. Yeah, I was chasing safety. So. Yeah. So the pa- was there passion? Uh, 
I think maybe a little bit in the beginning, you mm -hmm. know, there was in the beginning. Um, but then as you know, we started having kids, I started realizing, wow, he's really controlling the kid. Like he's so in control. He can't even show love to the kids. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, uh, I felt, re and then I, this resentment started to bubble up, you know, he, he was jealous of the kids. He was jealous of my attention to them because, you know, I, the, in his mind, things went A, B, C, D, you know, you're my wife, you do this, kids come suck, you know, it just, I realized, you know, I had created this life that was so under control. I was miserable, you know, and I just didn't feel love again. I didn't feel loved. So, you know, but you, you know, it, do you tell me how controlling were you of your own life? Because I do remember you being pretty controlling of your own life. Very. Yeah. Yeah. I was very. Us, I was like control with everybody, the whole family. Yeah. I was very control. Yeah. I just, I kept everybody at arm's length, you know. Um, it wasn't safe to be emotional or to show your emotions. Um, and so I didn't. I was very out of touch with, I think, how I felt anyways. You know, I didn't ever know how I felt until like weeks later. Oh, two weeks ago when this happened, that didn't feel good, you know, but it took me weeks to, to get to a point where I realized, oh, that was not okay, you know? Yeah. And, and so it just- And when you're out of touch with your emotions, you sometimes something, this would happen to me a lot, something would affect me emotionally. And it took me a while to realize it's affecting me emotionally until my body was hurting. It had to be hurting for me to realize it, not just like, because I, I, I couldn't pick up on the subtle emotional cues at first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even, no, that's even, exactly right. Yeah. Me and you were probably more similar than me and Chris in a lot of ways because we were both in our heads so much and both analytical and pulled away. Mm -hmm. Whereas Chris was more leaning in, right? And, yeah. uh, and so I even remember in martial arts, I, I, I would take these martial arts classes and I was a terrible blocker. I had no rhythm and timing because I was in my head. So I get hit easily, but I also didn't feel much. So I could get hit and just hit back. And I wouldn't, I would, you could give me a black eye and I would hardly notice it, you know, until it was all over. And because I was just numbed out. And, and that's what made me actually kind of good as a fighter <laughs> was the fact that I was really good with pain. Yeah. Um, now I'm not, I've, I've desensitized a lot of that numbness. I, I guess that sounds weird to say. Um, mm -hmm. I've let go of a lot of that numbness. And so, uh, so, so yeah. So, and as you let go of that numbness, you start feeling more and yeah. emotionally and physically. Yeah. Um, so, so as we move forward, is there anything else you want to cover between there and the time we got you into releasing? Cause a lot happened, I know, but what would be some basic, what would be the basics between, cause that was many years, you know, now you're living this life, you're married, um, you're, you've raised some kids and then what brought you ultimately through this process, this controlled life, you know, and you end up getting divorced and then eventually you come to releasing. Can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, I had a, a great relationship with my kids. Like I just thought like they were my pride and joy. You know, I love that. That was, that was one place where I could show, you know, my emotion was I, cause I, I wanted to give them what I never had. And so I was very, you know, um, expressive with them and very protective of them. Um, but at some point they started growing up and moving away from me and that became very difficult very yeah. difficult like you well, know your kids were, your kids were amazing because they were so embodied and athletic um mm -hmm. you encouraged all their sports their motocross and their crazy stuff they did i remember taking them uh, snowboarding and uh they were riding on the snowboards the first day like like they'd been doing it a while and i was like and i, I took our other nephew zach and um and it took him a while to get up. And the main reason I saw was the difference was because you had that trampoline for him. So they literally took a, a skateboard, took off the wheels, duct taped it up. Oh, that's right. I forgot taped, about that. Taped some tennis shoes to it and were doing flips on it and had learned the balance mechanism for snowboarding yeah. off of that trampoline. And then when, so when I put them on the board and took them out, they immediately, they already knew how to balance because they've been doing that for so long, flips and turns. And, and that's what yeah. pros actually learn on that stuff. And so- yeah. And so they, they are both adrenaline junkies. Yeah. Weird. You know, they're both adrenaline junkies and I, I'm not sure where that came from. <laughs> you know, one's, one loves riding his motor, motorcycle across the country. The other one's, um, uh, flying planes now. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think when my youngest, I think this was the turning point for me was when he got on his motorcycle and just 
like left, you know, didn't say goodbye. Um, and we didn't know where he was. He just decided he was going to go to Florida and, you know, and, and there was that panic because I also, and I don't know if we talked about this, but like I had a, a lot of abandonment issues and that sort of thing. So that I think brought all the abandonment issues up, you know, um, and I we started massive, massive emotional abandonment in the family. So that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so that's, I think where it all started to crumble. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't manage how I was feeling anymore. Like it just, I could hold it in for so long at work. And then when I get home, I just like felt like I was, I felt like I was losing my mind. I thought, remember telling you, I think I need to check myself in somewhere. I'm like I'm crying all the time. And I remember you calling me and saying, I need to talk. I need to talk, which was abnormal because Becky never needs to talk. Becky is <laughs> fine. It was, it's not that she's fine. It's just that she doesn't show emotion. So yeah. And I never felt fine, but I did present the, an image of fine. You yeah. know, everyone always, thought I was fine. I never was fine, but I just was really good at pretending to be fine. And, yeah. and well, I thought you, were, I was you weren't because people did know you were pulling away, but you just refused to show emotion because you came in the workshop and what was the first thing I told you? You're in your back. You're in your back. And you're not letting us feel your emotions. Yeah. Yeah. I was a holdout till Sunday. <laughs> and then you, you were hold out. You were pulling them back the whole time. Like, okay, okay, okay. Talking as a teaching, like I'm not going to come too close emotionally. And then I remember um, you went to work and you said, what did you say to that employee, uh, uh, the coworker? Something. Oh, I said, oh yeah, I went to this workshop and um, you know, they kind of like read your body and they look at your body language and guess what my body language says? And he goes, stay away. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, it's that obvious? So yeah, I guess it was pretty obvious that I was telling everybody to stay away. Yeah, people get used to seeing you a certain way and they just say, that's mm -hmm. the way Becky is. That's the way Brian is. That's the way. And, <clears throat> and so you can go through a lifetime of people saying, well, that's the way you are. And they don't give, ever give you that feedback. And yeah. so you need some people that will just give you honest feedback as yeah. to who you're really being. Yeah. So. And, you know, somebody at work also said, um, something about, well, I give you a hug, but I know you don't like hugs. Yeah. And it wasn't that I didn't like hugs, but they just made me really uncomfortable. I just, I've never been comfortable with, with hugs from people. Like, My kids, yeah, but people, general people, it's, it's always been hard for me. Yeah, because those people can abandon you and hurt you if you let them in. Yeah. One of my mentors said, you can't have love unless you're willing to have your heart broken wide open, you know, because mm -hmm. any protection of your heart is, is also going to hold back any connection with another person mm -hmm. that you're going to potentially love. Mm -hmm. so that's, a, that's a crazy thing when you think about it. Polarity. Yeah. Um, okay. So then you get into releasing I, and I say, well, come down and take this releasing or how did I say it? I mean, I don't even remember. I, I said, you know, I think you, I think you, you'd probably get a lot out of this. I think you'd probably right. really like this, you know? And I was off for the summer. So, you know, I thought, okay, I'll do anything, you know, I'll do whatever. I just, I just, I need to do something. Right. Oh, I know you, you did. Um, when I was sitting at your house that one day you were trying to get me to release and you said, how do you feel? And I said, I feel really sad. And then you said, okay, feel it. And then I guess I kept pulling, I was, I kept pulling back and you said, see, you keep, you keep pulling back. And I know for that second, for the rest of that, you know, just that little bit of release that I did felt really good. Yeah. And, and I thought, oh, I just, you know, I need some more of this, you know, so. Good, good. And that's, that's what I want is, is if, even if we can get 1%, that can be the 1% that brings down the whole dam eventually. Yeah. And um, sometimes when we get somebody who's really stubborn, we, all we can get in the beginning is a little bit. But my goal for you guys and for you guys out there too, is to teach you guys to fish and not give you a fish. So that's why we don't do a lot of private sessions because and we love private sessions. You can learn a lot in them. But what I want is private. If you're going to do them, is you got to do them in conjunction with actually learning to use the tools on yourself, not just saying, I just want you to do it for me, Brian, because that ultimately uh, will take forever and ultimately won't, uh, you need to learn to take care of you and use private sessions and things like that to maintenance the process, to content, to learn the subtleties and the details and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, so we get you into the class and then we, we grab Chris and we pull her in too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, um, and so she, uh, she, so we got both my sisters down there 
and it's a weekend course. And so can you talk about what happens in the, in the releasing weekend? Yeah. I, uh, so, you know, you're doing these exercises where, you know, the people are face to face and you're reading off the, uh, the ag flap emotions, yep. you know, you started at the bottom, um, yep. with apathy and you start reading them off and you, you gave us these instructions about, you know, think of a circumstance where you felt that or something like that. And I'm thinking, I don't feel anything, you know, and there's guys over, you know, like falling up, you know, like crumbling, you know, crying, you know, that I remember the one guy who was, he was a Marine and he was just like, all this emotion was coming up. And I remember thinking, wow, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, I don't feel anything. Uh, yeah. And, and I went through the whole day, Friday, all of Saturday. And then I think Sunday, uh, I think you said something to me that kind of just like, was like, just, just that little, you know, like it was almost like that little chip that just, it was all like the, the straw, you know, um, Saturday night after everybody had left, you know, you said, oh, I'm going to break you open. I could say something right now to break you. <laughs> and, and then the next day, I think you said something like, you know, um, you yelled at me actually you yelled at me and I didn't like I that. Remember. Huh? Go ahead. I don't remember, but I do, I do a lot. I use different techniques depending on the moment for everybody. Well, Jonathan came in. This was before everybody got there and Jonathan came in. I don't know if you remember this, Jonathan, but he came in and you were talking to Chris and I'm like, yeah, good. Focus on her. She's screwed up. She needs your help. <laughs> right. And so I'm talking to Jonathan and you yelled at me. You said, you know, like, Hey, you know, I got you here. You got all this crap. What's it feel like to have your parents treat you like shit your whole entire life? You know, that's why you're here. You're going to release something. You need to, you know, focus. Because every time you said, every time I talk to you, you pull away and distract yourself and find something else to do. And you were right. But I just, I wasn't aware of it because I was, you know, I was just trying to be friendly to Jonathan. I thought, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was a subconscious thing that I did a lot. So, <clears throat> Yeah, some people so, respond to maternal and some people respond to paternal and you got you to gotta create a balance and you got to figure out what people respond to yeah. and not make it personal, not make it a true attack, but a wake up call. And yeah. that's kind of what we're doing there. Yeah. Um, continue yeah. on. So, so it, was, it, was, it kind of woke me up. I mean, I think I just, it jolted me for a second. And then as the day went on, like everyone that by that time is feeling great because it's Sunday afternoon, they've released all this crap and I'm not. I could feel it just churning inside of me. And um, finally, I think it was like maybe about 1130, you said, how's everybody feeling? And I'm like, I don't feel good. I'm not okay, you know, and just all this stuff came out, you know, and um, this like just a lot of uh, emotion, just sadness, just, I, I, I couldn't even tell you what it was. It was just a lot of crap coming up. Pandora's box. So the, you know, you open Pandora's yeah. box, you better be ready because all that stuff's there and now you have to clean it out. Yeah. So where, where'd you go from there with the releasing? Because then the weekend's over, right? You're going to go yeah. home with this. Yeah. You got all these yeah. tools we taught you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, get a, you get a few releasing calls, you get on those. Yeah. And I weekend. just, I, I, I felt so much better. Like on that drive home on Sunday night, I, I, you know, we had done that energetic embodiment and that was amazing. And I drove home and I, I remember thinking, you know what, I am, I'm doing this. And, you know, it just, it, I felt so much better. And so I just jumped on it. I was just releasing all day, every day. And I, um, I got sick. I, I literally got sick, like physically um, sick. That happened. Um, yeah. I had stomach issues. I had um, sinus issues. I mean, I do, you name it. I got it probably for a good, until the next releasing workshop, I think I was sick. And um, yeah, but- Were you but, sick and feeling better or sick and feeling worse? Um, I would get sick and then I would feel better. And then I would get, it, it was almost like I was dredging this stuff up that had been in my body for so long, um, you know, that I was literally getting physically sick. And, and then it would, and then that would go away, but then something else would, would come up, and I guess. I don't know if that's where those emotions were stored and that's why, you know, that area of my body just felt so crappy 
Yeah, and there's but, a whole yeah. the body stores emotions all through it. And uh, so chemically, we, we pump different emotions, different parts of the body just to, for different types of trauma. And uh, there's a whole system to it. Um, it's very powerful to realize as, as you start to release, a lot of things can heal themselves and do. Uh, it's what Lester's famous for, Hawkins is famous for. Uh, even myself, I've healed a lot with releasing. Uh, not everything, but a lot. So um, so you, you, do you still have the asthma? Has that been back? Yeah, I still have the asthma, but I started releasing on that, you know, and uh, I got in touch with that doctor, uh, doctor, what was it? Uh, Johnny. Yeah, and I, I started watching his YouTube videos, and he recommended this nasaline thing and, you know, some other stuff, and I, just some natural things, and it's, it's almost gone. Like, I'm not using my inhaler, and yeah, yeah, it got a lot better. Remember, you said it was releasing for a long time, and it was coming back a little and better. And then, yeah. then you, and the, the thing about releasing is, some sometimes it just goes away. And sometimes you release, and you realize I should talk to this guy. I should call this person. I should call it. And the answer shows up, whether through outside uh, uh, resources or not. Um, there's a lot of doctors I like out there, Louise, and Mark Ajani is one. Go to just in space, just in space health on uh, YouTube, Just Space In Space Health on YouTube and check out Justin Marcajani. That's his channel. Um, the, uh, I like Dr. Sh Darren Schmidt out of uh, North Carolina, uh, not North Carolina, out of Michigan, uh, Ann Arbor Nutritional Healing Center too. Uh, and there's a few others, Dr. Rachel West in Los Angeles. She's, she has a lot of great stuff too. So these are different doctors you can check out. And there's another Dr. Patel here in Los Angeles I'm checking out too. <clears throat> Continue on, go, go for it. Oh, um, yeah. So where are we at? I, you know, I, I, I think I wanted to go back to the, um, re the first releasing workshop because we did that energetic embodiment and I remember, um, going back and forth, you, you said, pick something that you think that you can manifest within the first week. And I thought, oh, okay, you know, some, I'll think of something simple. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, both of them, I could, I went back and forth between two things and both of them happened within the first week. Nice. So it was pretty, I thought, wow, this, that's pretty, that's crazy. Do you want to, do you want to share those? I'm sure we uh, can share those. Yeah, I, um, so, okay, this is kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> we were talking, mm -hmm. I was thinking, I don't know, just whatever popped into what you said, whatever pops in your head. And I remember who was your other coach? So we were doing energetic embodiment or modeling, right? Modeling. Yeah. 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 And I, you had that other coach, the female, and I'm trying to remember her name, but she had Anna, mentioned, Anna Maria? You wanted, yeah, no, not Anna Marie. Um, the other one. Okay. Dark hair. Yeah. Okay. Wait, she had dropped, she said, Oh, I want to find a hundred dollar bill on the ground. And I thought, Oh, that's way too hard. I don't want to do that. I'll just, I just want to get um, dollar bills for men. Like, I don't know what, why men, but it, I just thought. And I was that. teasing you about becoming a stripper. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I, and, and, but then I was also thinking, be nice to just have people come up and just give me like a friendly kiss on the cheek. Like that. I don't, I don't know why I thought of it, but it just thought it, that would feel really good right now. Right. And so the night, but I was going, I was trying to focus on one, but I, I couldn't because I have a very hard time focusing on one thing. I can, so I focused on, for some reason, I just kept going back and forth. So the night ended and as I'm leaving, one of the guys from the workshop came up and gave me a kiss on the cheek and said goodbye. And then you walked me to the car, gave me a kiss on the cheek and said goodbye. And I just, as I drove home, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like that's exactly what I you know, I mean, it's not like you and I kiss each other on the cheek. We just don't no. really do that, right? No, it was very, uh, very, we didn't do that even in our family much. Yeah, there was not yeah. a lot of that. Not express, we didn't express emotion. Um, but, but then uh, my youngest came home uh, within that first week, which, you know, when I think back, that's pretty telling too, you know, that mm -hmm. he decided to come home. This is from uh, being on that, that motorcycle trip where yeah. he disappeared. He just sh yes. he showed up back home. Yeah, he showed up back home. Um, he actually called me and he, and he said, can you lend me the money to get home? Because it was winter and he had a motorcycle and he wanted to come home. And I said, yeah, you know. And, and when he came home, the next morning, he pulled a lot of bills out of it and handed them to me. But that's exactly what I had seen in my head when I was doing the energetic embodiment was these bills. 
because somebody mm -hmm. handed me a wad of bills and it was three hundred dollars you know kind of folded over and when he handed it to me it's like the world stopped like time stood still and i went holy crap like it just happened you know mm -hmm. so and that's that's the interesting part when energetic embodiment uh and modeling what we have you do in the beginning guys is start with little things like this like i started with little people giving me free bottles of water and cups offering them to me without me asking and i was able to get that immediately like three three or four times that same day and uh it seems like well that could that's too easy after you get it but that's the whole point is you want to rack up successes so you can get to the bigger <laughs> stuff then when the bigger stuff starts to happen you get even like wow this is crazy Mm -hmm. um, we've had students manifest all kinds of crazy stuff. So, and it starts with these little things and so you build that reality. Okay. You got to build successes. So continue, continue on. Where, where, yeah. Where'd you go from there? But I did, I was very aware of um, the fact that I tend to sit in my back. And so I was trying very hard to, you know, sit forward, stay out of my head, focus on how I was feeling um, and I was doing a lot of the follow-up webinars. I was watching the videos, you know, from his channel about just kind of sometimes just going out at lunchtime and just feeling your legs, you know, just feeling your feet and your legs and releasing on all of that. Um, and, you know, people were telling me that I was different. You know, people were mentioning like, you just, you seem calmer. You, you know, you seem, you don't seem as fidgety and anxious as you usually do. Yeah. Um, and then I went to the next releasing, uh, workshop because I thought the first one was so good, you know, I want to do this again in case I missed something. Cause I was just, you know, like, it just feels so good. I can't wait to release some more. And, um, and then Dave mentioned it too. He said, you know what? I heard your voice. It sounded, it didn't sound like the same person. So, yeah. You were more open in the front and you were more connecty and, loving and excited and and wanting you know there was this yeah. whole thing showing up yeah so yeah and that was great too i mean i i remember just uh the energy in the room was completely different in the second seminar what you know um can you go back a little bit what weren't there a lot of changes from the first workshop to the second besides just being open oh yeah in your life right like, you know, yeah, every week you were like oh my god this happened that happened you were i was getting messages constantly do you, do you remember all that yeah, I mean, uh, I was getting opportunities because I'm a teacher. I was getting opportunities to teach outside of what I was already doing and um, paying double what I, you know, make. Um, I was getting opportunities to do that. Did you do some modeling to make more money in that time, or was that after? Uh, I think I was releasing on my goals. I, you know, I had a goal to make, you know, above and beyond what I was making now. And so, um, so I, I felt like that was just like uh like a small seed you know okay so you started making more money and then, then now did, was this when you got the 8k or is this when you um it kind of all came at one month like it, you know i got an opportunity to do that um and then you know i was teaching kids that are um hospital bound and so the district pays you outside of your regular wage to go you know they pay you very well to go you know wherever the kids are at um, and then I just got a lump sum from the IRS, um, which I didn't expect. So, uh, so all in that one month, it, it was 8,000 above what I was already making. So. Nice. So you got an extra 8K, which was the exact amount you had been releasing at on if you got it every month for, right. uh, for a year. Because you, yeah. you wanted to make a certain amount a year. And so, yeah, yeah really Pretty good. Cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I just, I think my biggest thing is I'm not releasing on my goals consistently. And, you know, that's something I, I'm really good at, like, I'm very good at releasing consistently. Like, I'm ver really aware of how I feel most of the time. Um, but the releasing on the goals, I think, is what makes a huge, you know, difference. Yeah, yeah that's really good. So then you get to the next releasing workshop, and, and how is that different for you? Um, a lot, you know, it's just, uh, like a review, you know, and, and then there were new things that I learned too. And so it was, it sort of cemented what I already knew. And I just wanted to immerse myself in this whole thing. I wanted it to, to be part of me because now, like when I release, like yesterday was like, like, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but 
I thought about this yesterday. Like it was, I felt very heavy yesterday and I kept releasing. I kept trying to release. I wouldn't go. I was releasing on the stuckness. And I remember I get excited when I know there's going to be a release because I know how much better I'm going to feel. Even though I feel shitty at the time. Yeah, you I stop worrying so much about feeling shitty. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that I feel excited about how good I'm going to feel when this is finally gone, you know? Yeah, that's, and then that's what makes you want to feel that, like, oh, bring up the shittiness. I can take it. I can take <laughs> yeah. it because it's coming out of me, and then my yeah. life's going to get better, and that's exactly what just happened to me. That's why I live the way I do now. Um, like, you've seen my life change from my 20s yeah. to now. And, yeah, and oh, yeah. You're not the same. You're not even the same person. Yeah, it's it's in, in the way I live and my lifestyle, everything radically shifted. And a big part of that was releasing. Uh, uh, and, and we're going to, we actually should start calling it revealing because we do call it that. Because yeah. the reason I call it revealing is, um, and it's a recent name change, is because um, I've, I've made a lot of changes to how I see the process based on my years of experience in manifesting and um, revealing really gets you focused on the reveal to the next level of growth more versus trying to, you know, what you, I don't want you guys focusing on what you want to let go of. I want to focus, want you focusing on where you're going. And that's why I call it revealing. I, I, I want to reveal more love. I want to reveal more courage. I want to reveal more personal power uh, versus let go of apathy, grief, fear. And so there's that a little bit of a mindset shift and a focus shift for you guys. So, so then I start calling it revealing. You take the next workshop and wh wh where did everything go from there? Um, I think when I took the next workshop, the thing that stood out to me the most was that I needed to start um, releasing from the cap emotions. Um, Cause I realized, you know, I had spent so many, I felt so sick from the first, you know, from all that releasing, I was releasing stuff from when I was four and five years old that I remember being so traumatic. Um, and the, as those things were coming up, I was just feeling sicker and sicker and sicker. And so um, in the second workshop, Hold on real quick. are you scratching on the table or anything? Who me? Yeah. No. Oh, you know what? No, it might be my air conditioner. Okay, there's this little scratchy noise. It sounds like somebody's dragging on on a on something, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. It's stopped now. Yeah, I think I think you really emphasize to release from the cap emotions. Um, you know, welcome the cap emotions, feel good first, and then you know re release on the lower on the lower you know emotions. So yeah, I, I emphasize that a lot, but people get addicted to trying to get rid of their low emotions. Yeah. And they get so addicted to it, they they get stuck in them. Yeah. I'm trying. What I was do what I was doing a lot was releasing from my head. Uh huh. Um, you know, I I know from the first workshop to the next, I sort of lost my technique a little bit, forgot how to do it really well, and I had gotten to the point where I was just releasing from my head. I wasn't. Well, feeling what do you think that was? What what caused? Because this happens to a lot of people. They they. They get, they get a ton of releases and then suddenly they get stuck. And what, what was that for you? And there's a reason for that. I see it typically. It's just typically the same reason. I want to see what you have to say. Um, you know, I, I couldn't tell you why. I, why. I think I just um, was spending a lot of time alone and, you know, just forgot. I don't know. A lot of people get, tell me if this, you think this is the case. A lot of people get really excited about getting the next release. And well, they that's get, true. Yeah. They get out of the now and they get in the future racing to get to, to get to a goal. Whenever you do that, you can't release anymore because you're out of the now. You, it's almost like you forget the welcoming. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll welcome this and feel it just so I can get to the next release. And yeah. in that process, you're not really welcoming anymore because you're not in the now with the welcome. You're trying to get it done. And so that's why the, uh, that's where people get stuck. And so they gotta they gotta un they gotta unlearn that habit. That is true. That's exactly what I was doing. Like it just it felt so good to feel better that I just wanted to hurry up and release on the next thing, mm -hmm. so that I could move on. You know. So. And then it quit working. Kind of quit working. Yeah, you yeah. get all this resistance, but then when you finally get the technique straightened back out again, you get a yeah. bunch of releases that follow yeah. it. And yeah. then another big explosion of growth. So don't think that all that resistance isn't leading to some big polarization on the other side of a change. Yeah. Um, so then you, then you have, you've had more. And so you did the second one and what's been going on since then? Um, I just, you know, I, I had to kind of release on um, just where I am in my life right now. 
you know, being single. I've never been single ever <laughs> and been happy with it, you know, like, as I, and I just wanted to get to the point where I was happy with where I'm at, you know, and content. And so I've been releasing a lot on that and, um, you know, and just, you know, I want to do something different, you know, I want to make a difference and, you know, I'm feeling like I want my, you know, I'm a teacher. So I've always felt like, okay, that's sort of my purpose, but I'm, I, um, I don't know. I just, you know, I just want my life to count, you know? Yeah. I want to matter. I want my life, you know, I feel like I have this big, all this stuff, you know, and I, and I know nobody has a perfect life, right? Everybody has stuff. And I, I feel like, you know, my life should count for something, right? So. And, and all, yeah, every life has a purpose. A right. greater purpose. And so, and so where's your, since, since the beginning of releasing till now, since you first, we br- first brought you in, how much has your life changed? Oh, it's just, I think it's like radic, radical. I feel, I feel like it's radical just in how I feel, you know, just, I just feel like a different person. Yeah. And, uh, I, my relationships are better, you know, not, not that my relationships were ever bad, but I, but I'm focused more on expressing myself to people. I think, you know, um, being more expressive. I know, um, Sam, Sam likes to talk about the Jim Carrey thing, you know, where you're just radically expressive about whatever happens. I don't know. I might be, I might be misquoting him, but that's what I took from that. You know, you sort of walk around and just, you know, just get radically expressive about, you know, how you feel about things. You know, you see a flower and it's, Oh, that's amazing. You know? Yeah. He Um, was actually becoming, I think he was radically appreciating or falling in love or having gratitude for whatever. Yeah. Practicing over maybe dramatizing it a bit, you know, you want to get out of the drama ultimately, but as you start to open your heart more and more, you start to feel more and more love for things and it becomes easier to release. The more your heart's open, the easier it is to release. And I, and I I have realized how closed off I've been. And so, um, you know, my way of opening my heart in the morning is to um, release on the, you know, I just, I think about the cap emotions and I, I go through them and try to think of an experience where I felt that way. Um, and then meditate on opening my heart and whatever gets in the way of that, you know, I try to release on that. So if you were to sum up releasing um, and what it really is and, and because, you know, there's, there's this huge aspect of really becoming emotionally intelligent. I think that's a big part of releasing. Would you agree? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Being able to relate to understand, feel and process emotions at a fast level yeah. and, and, uh, and then being able to utilize those emotions to create what you want. Because a lot of you guys are trying to do stuff like law of attraction stuff and, and, yeah. and, and pull stuff to you that you want, energetic embodiment, energetic modeling. And what happens is because you don't have control of your emotional body, your feeling body, it doesn't work. It actually usually repels what you try to create through law of attraction because you're, you're, you're repressing so much heavy emotion that's actually active even if you're repressing it. And so uh, releasing is getting you control of the manifestation vehicle, which is the body. And then how much more do you manifest in your life after you get control of it? How much does your life change? You know, I think, um, you know, I, I would sum it all up and say, well, I don't know if I'd sum it up, but um, I have taken antidepressants, I don't know, since, I don't know, for the last probably 15, 20 years, you know, thinking that this is just my life. You know, I was raised by, you know, the mother that I had. So, you know, I've got all this trauma, you know, that is, I, there's really nothing I can do about it. I just have to learn to sort of live with it, you know, and work around it. And um, so I, uh, back in, after the first releasing workshop, I thought I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. I just feel so good without it. Um, And then the doctor, like, I don't know, it's been a couple of times the doctor's like, you know what, you need, you're, you're, you're going to, you're like basically discouraging me from not taking them. Like she's trying to get me back on them. So the last time I talked to her um, back in March, when this whole, you know, coronavirus thing started, she said, yeah, you're right at that critical point, Becky, if you don't, I'm going to really encourage you to get back on them before you crash. 
And um, I said, why would I do that? I feel so good, you know? Um, and so it's been, what, no, since November that I've been off of them. And um, I consider that a huge win. Nice. You know, nice. you know and we're, we're not telling you to ignore your doctor or anything like that, but, but Becky has uh, made her own choices and she's feeling great right now. So that's, that's her choice. Um, so uh, really good stuff, by the way. Beautiful. Um, I love hearing all this and, and I can see that your life's only growing and getting better and better and better. And it's had a huge effect on our family too. And this is kind of the last thing I want to cover before I open this to questions, but um, how much has it changed your relationship, not just with me and with me, you, our sister, Chris, with my mom, uh, how much is all that changing? Yeah, I, I've, I've, I can't, I've never been able to tolerate mom. I mean, I just, I, there was just, I couldn't stand to be in the same room with her. And, uh, I don't know. It just doesn't matter to me anymore. You know, like all that stuff that, um, used to bother me doesn't bother me anymore. It's it, it's not that she, it's not that it's almost like the memory is almost gone. It's faded to the point where it doesn't it doesn't have the impact on me like it did. You know, she would do something and it would oh my god, she's always done that. It drives me nuts. You know, um, and I it just I don't know. It's just I'm able to live in the moment and release when something upsets me and and. and I'm not great at it. I'm not an expert at it, but I have learned how to feel how I'm feeling. And I know that the, a lot of those memories have faded. Yeah. yeah, I consider that a big win. So, And has she changed? I remember, I remember going out there for that party in Idaho. And uh, I remember yeah. how much she was acting different. Yeah, she, yeah, she cried the whole time I was there. Cried and apologized for our whole childhood, basically. <laughs> I remember that. And Chris is like, who is she? Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, our sister. So, uh, that was powerful yeah. too. Um, great stuff. Um, uh, let me see here. Chris, uh, is there anything you wanted to say? I know we've been talking about you a bit, so I think you should have an opportunity to say something. Um, where, where are you at really quick? And then we're going to open it up to questions. Um, There you are. Chris, do you want to talk? And you just put it in the chat if you do. And then I can open it. I can turn on your mic so you can talk. Okay. Uh, Did you say no? There. All right. Can I hear you, Chris? Uh, allow Chris to talk. Wait, let me read this. Allow to talk is not available because Christy Tyrus is using an older version of Zoom. Oh, your Zoom is out of date. So I can't allow you to talk. <laughs> That sucks. Um, is there anything you want to say in the chat really quick? Yeah, type it and then I'll, I'll repeat it. You try to make her a panelist, Brian. Oh, uh, it says her Zoom's out of date when I tried to allow her to talk. How can I make her a panelist? I can do it from my end since I'm the host. Let me try. Okay. I'm going to move this back. There she is. Now you have to unmute yourself. I'll unmute you. There we go. Okay, you there? You have a microphone? I'm here. I've been no. gardening all morning. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be on here. This is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I just wanted to say, you know, I, my releasing has been a lot slower. I've got big release here and a big release there. Um, not anything like what Becky's been doing. But um, shut the door. <laughs> Yeah, one second. She lives with me. Mom lives with me. So um, I'm, I'm always on guard. You know, when I'm releasing, I'm feeling like she's going to come walking in my door any minute. Um, Beth, my daughter, uh, just pointed out, she said, Becky's sitting here and she's releasing and she's talking about all this childhood stuff. And the whole time she's doing it, you're looking behind your back to see if she's, if, if grandma's going to come in and or she's coming down the hall or she's listening you know you're on guard all the time so i can't i can't comfortably release like becky's doing but now that you know she's going to be moving out and getting her own place i think i think i'm going to have a huge change in june 
And then when I come to the releasing in July, I think, I think I'm going to be a different person. I'm just really looking forward to it because I mean, I'm getting a lot of releasing and stuff, but, but I'm looking forward to the freedom of being, of allowing it, you know, yeah. so without the fear behind me all the time. So have you released on mom catching you releasing? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can release on that too. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I recommend you do that and, yeah. and see what happens. And plus, how much has your life, your life changed just since releasing? It's not, instead of comparing yourself to Becky, how much has your life changed? Okay. Well, when I went to the releasing at your house, the main point, every time I'd say something, you would come back with, Chris, stop pushing. Chris, stop pushing. Because I would, everything was, I need to, I have to, I've got to, I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. And I'm not, I'm not like that anymore so much. I'm kind of living in the now a lot better and just enjoying it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to June when I can release, but it's not like I have to get it done or anything like that. I'm just, I'm excited about it because it gives yeah. me more freedom. Do you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's okay. a big difference in you. I'm just wondering how much you've recognized all your gains, like with your job, uh, getting transferred, uh, you know, things like this. You know, yeah, wanting to wanting mom to get her own apartment. Now she's get she came to you on her own, and she's getting her own apartment because you released on it, and you yeah. know, all this different stuff that's been happening. Yeah, I had um, I had a really big release about a week and a half ago on her, and I was just like it stunned me, it literally stunned me, it stopped me in my tracks. And I was, I was talking to, to Beth about it. And about two days later, mom came to me and she's like, you know, I'm just really not happy here. I need to get my own place. And I'm just like, I couldn't believe it. You know? And then we found a place within two days, we found a place that had an opening coming up. And it's like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. It's just already awesome. put in her application applications already in and there's an opening coming up in 30 days and it's just been yeah, yeah. and then you wanted you wanted your daughter to get her own place and now she's doing it and yeah. everything's uh, falling into place yeah, yeah. and then uh, Becky like, and then your relationship to Becky how much has that changed Becky and I we talk better we uh, I think that we used to be on guard with each other a little bit we, we would be careful how we said things because we might offend the other one or hurt the other one's feelings because we were so um, waiting to get hurt, waiting for somebody to hurt us. Uh -huh. You know, and I don't think we're like that anymore. We just kind of, we were able to talk a little more freely. Yeah. So I highly suggest you keep a Gaines journal and I suggest everybody out there listening, a success journal and write down all your successful releases or changes in your life because it's very easy to forget them after you get them, that's but true. you get a lot of them and that's what keeps you going. And the more you see it, the more you realize the power you have to change your life in exactly the way I want. Um, and that's, what's really powerful. So, um, so um, and somebody wrote, how do you consider a successful release? If you feel lighter, you feel even 1% better, I consider it a successful release. And then I look, and then eventually you start seeing changes. The outside world starts treating you different. So things, so situations around you change. Things that used to bother you don't bother you anymore. You look at things and you go, wow, that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> I know for you, Chris, that your job suddenly became much closer to you, wanted to take care of you, wanted to move you to the new department, wanted to... Right. You know, all these things started happening after you started releasing. And, and it's, as Lester used to say, it's getting the put, and I want to, want to hear your guys' response to this, but it's getting the push out so the world stops pushing back. And so the moment you stop pushing and pulling on the world, the world starts becoming very friendly, does it not? Yes. Yeah. It's not um, anymore. Yeah. So awesome. I'll keep you on the call for the rest of this. And, um, uh, and I want to open the, this to questions. We've got nine questions. I'm going to look through them really quick. And I want to keep the questions centered on asking uh, either uh, Becky or Chris any questions that come up. Um, uh, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, so hello, Brian and Becky. And I can, you can even point this to Chris. Did the revealing process, aka releasing, help you let go of pain from past relationships, like going through drama? And yeah. have you, by the way, Brian, will you make some day a webinar call on faith? Yeah, yeah, that would sounds great. I'd love to do a webinar call on faith. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, like, um, because I, 
after my divorce, I was in a, a, a long-term relationship, lasted about eight years, um, and it wasn't good. It, it, I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't good. But I would say that I did, you know, there were a lot of feelings. I, I, I felt like I was in love and, and all that. It just wasn't good. And so it ended um, over a year ago, but the feelings, I just couldn't, I, I was brushing all my feelings under the rug all the time. And thinking this is, I'm just gonna have to feel this, you know, all the time. Um, and so I started releasing on that. And that's the first time I've ever processed emotions like that. And uh, I just would feel it, you know, and uh, like yesterday, you know, was one of those days and uh, I just, things would come up and I just kind of lay there and feel it, feel sad and cry about it. And, and then it would, you know, let it go. Um, <laughs> And uh, you just feel better and better. Yeah, I think yeah. yesterday had a lot to do with you being on this call. Probably. Um, that's, that's usually what it is. When there's a big event, like I'm going to expose myself to all these people <laughs> and uh, all my, my stories. Oh, my God. And then shit starts coming up for you to release. That's the way it works. You're stepping into a huge amount of tension compared to what you're used to. From a woman that's used to sitting in her back and hiding herself from the world to saying, asking me the question, how many people are going to be on this call? You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big uh, ex opportunity to expose yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. So I want to acknowledge you for that. And then you'll get more oh. releasing after the call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to release on all of this after we, after we get off the call. I, 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 I used to do the same thing. Now I think stuff's easy. Um, oh. So, um, so uh, Chris, has it changed your relationships? Um, I think so. I pain from past relationships. How much does it change that? A lot, a lot. Um, I do a lot of releasing on, on my ex-husband bill because I would, as soon as I got into the relationship, he took over. He was so overbearing. I just shut down and I went, I went into my head for eight years and now I'm releasing on all this, <clears throat> getting rid of all the, it was guilt and just pain and things that I should have been doing what I wasn't doing because I didn't, I just wouldn't speak up, you know, and it just, it's, it's helped me a lot. And now because of that, I'm, I'm more outspoken about my feelings with Beth, you know, and with other people, I think, because I, I didn't allow myself to talk to anybody. I just shut down and I, I quit feeling. And yeah. I had to, re, by releasing all of that, I'm starting to feel again. Nice. You know, I'm starting to, to feel comfortable talking to people about my feelings and not being afraid. Yeah. I, I, I would add to that too. I think that's why my relationship with my mom, I can, I can deal with it now because, you know, you both know um, when she's mad to get you to do something, she will annihilate you, you know, verbally, you know, and uh, very hurtful. She, you know, I had a whole list of very hurtful things that she had said and done to me, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and I think, you know, I've just been able to release on all of that. And the, when, when I, when you, when I release the pain, the memories go with it too. The thoughts, the, the images and everything go with it too. And, um, that's been really helpful. You can call up and remember that it happened, but it just, if you want to, but it, there's, it doesn't really come up anymore because there's no charge on it. Yeah. There's no charge on it. Yeah. That's how I would say too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's move on. Daniel. Um, accident in a detrimental way. However, I just hear more. So Daniel, this question is more for me about releasing uh, in general. Uh, I guess I could direct it towards my sisters, uh, but um, I'm not looking for any questions about how to release as much because this call is really an interview for the sis my sisters. So I want to look go to those calls first. Um, but I could direct it towards you guys and see what you say. Um, uh, he says he's been practicing releasing for a couple of years now, and I've been aware recently how I've been practicing it in a detrimental way. Um, it's hard to say that that can happen, but let's see. However, I became more aware the other day that I'm very identified with the letting go process 
and feeling like it's the best process and I have practiced that and the, and only that. What do you think about it being the optimum practice and do you think it suits uh, it, it suits as best for everyone. Well, that's, I can't really direct that to you ladies. Um, because I don't, I don't know if you have a real, I just think, uh, a, a huge relationship to it. I, I think all, you know, you gotta ultimately anything that gives you more feeling, if you get it, I'll just say this, if you get attached to a system, the system will eventually fail you. You, you constantly have to reinvent the system as you expand and grow. This is what works today will work slightly differently tomorrow and slightly differently the day after that. If you don't have a constant process of growth and expansion as you change uh, awareness, like you might even need to just reread the book over and over and over as you change and you'll get new insights and stuff you didn't see in the book before, different processes. But I don't, I don't subscribe to any one system. I subscribe to feeling and depth of feeling. Um, Becky, what do you mean by releasing on your goals? I'll let you answer that. Oh, um, yeah, so, um, you know, you had us write down these goals in the releasing, releasing work, workshops. And so I just look at the goal and whatever feelings come up in relationship to that. Like um, sometimes, you know, you might have, like I have a financial goal and then there's these feelings that come up or thoughts that come up that say, you're never going to do that. Like, what do, who do you think you are? You're never going to do that. You know, how's that going to happen? You know, so that for each of those things, I... I release on it. Oh. Well, you could, yeah, and you could probably add to that too. Yeah, I think it's good. That's good for now. Because um, uh, uh, we've done a few how-to releasing calls and they can go back and reference those. And if they want to get in the releasing workshop this next weekend coming up, uh, the revealing workshop masterclass, then uh, they can hit the link in the, in the chat box here that's going to be put in here in a second. And uh, get involved in that because that's going to, we're going to spend two days, full days actually going over a lot of this how to and playing with releases and stuff like that to give you an experience of that you can take home with you and the emotions too. Um, uh, do you, uh, you do revealing on live at live events like the intensives? Yeah, we do. We do work with it. A lot of people have taken some of it beforehand. Some of it haven't. Uh, but we do work a lot with embodiment in the live workshops and, uh, and, and, and there are releasing workshops, revealing workshops themselves that you can get into. And those are amazing and powerful workshops and even embodiment and energetic embodiment. But um, we also do um, um, uh, a lot of that type of stuff. We play with it indirectly and directly um, during the workshops, helping you get, because the whole goal of our workshops is to get all the emotions out of your body and resistance to whatever you want to create, whether that's dating or anything else. Um, is bioenergetics good for releasing? I have no idea. I don't know what bioenergetics is. Um, I have an idea of what it is based on the word, but if that's a specific trademark technique, I've never done the technique. Um, uh, Philip, uh, can you explain how to release on your goals? We already talked about that. Do you mean releasing on aversions to a goal? Yes, you can release on aversions and attachments uh, to actually release on the goal itself. Um, um, I'm gonna move on to uh, the next one, which is more for Brian and Becky. When you release uh, reveal in, a re in relation to your judgments towards other people, behaviors, and how they make you feel in general. Have you uh, also experienced behavioral changes in them and how they interact with you rather than you not just being emotionally pulled by their behaviors? I noticed this in my own life subtly, I believe. Thanks yeah. For yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, like you were talking about mom and how she's different too. I, I feel like there's a spiritual aspect to it. And, you know, when you start changing, everyone else around you starts changing too, you know, and uh, I don't know, they just, they feel your energy. I guess your energy is different. I don't know. You could probably, you could speak to that. Yeah. You haven't seen one of our dating workshops and you need to come see to the next one when we actually do them live and you'll see all how much subtle communication causes people to treat you differently because we do radical amounts of micro subtle communication, subtle communication, and you see how you're either pushing or pulling on people. And we got it on camera, we put it up on the big screen, we break it down, we show you, and then we work on the feelings driving the subtle communication, very powerful stuff. And you begin to realize you are literally telling everybody how to treat you all day long, when, and then blaming everybody else for treating you that way. It's, it's a crazy thing. And I wanna do more talks on this, but 
you almost have to experience it to realize what an extreme level you're doing this at. Um, you know, you're, as, as, as the Lester goes back to you, getting the push out so that the, the world stops pushing back. Um, Chris, have you had this experience too? You know, uh, I got interrupted. I did. I I missed the whole. Yeah, I saw Beth's elbow come in there. Uh, <laughs> I, mom, came, mom came to the door. So, so <laughs> when, you, when you release and reveal on in relationship to your judgments towards other people's behaviors and how they make you feel in general, have you experienced behavioral changes in them and how they interact with you rather than? you just not being emotionally pulled by their behaviors. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, with Beth. Um. <laughs> hey, Beth. <laughs> just, this is my life. Um, no, it's just um, when I release on things, it just, it just seems to calm the energy down. So the approach on both sides seems, seems to improve. Mm -hmm. you know, um, there's a lot of tension in the house most of the time. So it's, it's easy to, for arguments and things like that to start. But when I'm releasing on a situation and then I approach it afterwards, it, it just seems to flow better on both sides. Yeah. You know? I, could, I could say it's just me and my approach that's causing the entire thing, but I don't think it is. I think it's the energy is being, being, it flows through the house, you know? And so everybody, everybody responds to it. Yeah, it's powerful. So thank you for saying that um, because that's, I think you, you're really re-illustrating that idea that you're getting the push out so the world stops pushing back. It comes back yeah, to that yeah. sentence that Lester said years ago. Yeah. Um, guys, put the uh, master class in the chat box because I just talked about it for anybody that's interested. Just go ahead and post that up now. We'll, we'll repost it a few times because so it you know, moves up and down the feed. Um, awesome, thanks guys. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Um, Guys, can you um, um, team uh, Jonathan or Cairo, can you guys start sorting through the Q&A and look for ones that really relate to the call so that I'm not in the moment having to read through them and try to figure out if they do. And then I can refer to you for questions. Uh, I would be really make it a lot easier because what I'm doing here is trying to read through these in the moment and make sure it's a good question for the call versus a question that has nothing to do with the call. So um, let me check this one out. Uh, Ike. I found that I have tons of pride in negative sense where I'm proud of losing, uh, of losing and proud of my limiting stories because I created them. When I release on pride, I notice it uncovers apathy and hopelessness. That can happen. Can this type of pride uh, of losing, uh, pride of losing actually uncover lower emotions on act? Yeah, they don't go in order. So you can have pride on your, on your apathy and, and that happens a ton. People come, become very prideful about their apathy and their grief and they own it like a badge. And when you go, to a, you go to a senior home and watch all the people that have a lot of regrets and then they're comparing all their pains and they have pride about all their pains and about how broken they are, you know, that's a good example. Um, uh, have you ladies experienced that? Like have you had, have you had a lot of, have you noticed the power of pride? in your life? Because if not, I want you to really start taking a look at okay. that. The pride um, is something is right or wrong, good or bad. And so then you look at your, your grief and I need to have this grief and you, you made a decision because I need to be punished. And there's a sense of, of pride in that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, more so before the class than after though. I think I've, I've grown yeah. from that a lot. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. Pride is on everything. So what were you going to say, Becky? Are you talking about in relationship to the revealing and the releasing or just overall? Yeah, in relationship to anything you're letting go of, if you noticed how much we put a judgment on everything before we let it, you know, almost every oh, relationship yeah. has some form of pride attached to it to me. Yeah, yeah, this is good, this is bad, you know. Yeah. Um, this feeling is not good, I gotta let it go, or this, you know, it. I know that um, my who I was was based on my past. Like, this is my story. You know, and I had a lot of pride in my story. Like, yeah. you know, I had this crappy childhood and, you know, I had this and I had to do, endure that. And there's a certain amount of pride in that, you know. Pride in your struggle. And pride in your, yep. Yeah, and the struggle. Yeah. This yeah. has made me who I'm really strong today because of that, you know. That's awesome. true. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Um, is uh, anybody reading the questions yet? Or do I want me just to keep going on from the staff? I have one from Facebook, Brian. So okay. it's uh, before resolving trauma, how do you identify these childhood traumas and how do you release on them, Becky? 
how do I identify the traumas? Well, I, you know what? Um, I kind of likened it to like being at a buffet, you know, and you know, like when you go through the line and you pick up a, uh, a plate out of the little springy thing and you pull the plate off and then the next one comes up. So I just started, you know, like releasing on what was in front of me at that time. And then as I released on the present, the little things would come up and then major things would come up and, you know, um, whatever comes up and whatever, you know, I guess, you know, whatever makes me feel crappy at that moment, whatever thoughts, feelings, pictures, images, or whatever, I try to release on that as they come up. I don't know. Naturally, yeah. Would you do, Brian? I don't know. The same basic idea. And then every once in a while I go back and welcome the good feelings. I can, I found that I can actually be in cap while feeling apathy. That takes time to realize when you come to that realization that you can be in love and peace and, and look at an apathetic feeling that's in your life and you can look at it and still feel love through your body in general. That's when you really start to get power in releasing because now you're not owned by your emotions. Your body's experiencing the emotions while you still stay in more of a cap based state more and more and more. And that's when you're really going free. Yeah. Um, Kind of like that description you said before. Imagine you're the sky. You imagine yeah. you're the sky and you're feeling great and everything, and all your emotions are the clouds that are going by in front of you, and you just deal with them one at a time as they go by, but you yeah. just stay up here and you're on top of it all. Yeah, you have exactly. Control. You can stay there. Yeah, I can walk into this room and see that it needs a ton of repairs. Let's say it's all damaged and the walls are broken, and I can be like, ah. Oh. Or I can walk into the room and feel great and say, wow, what can I do with this room? It's going to be exciting to change it and see it grow. This is going to be a cool project. And mm -hmm. then start cleaning it up and with this excitement of what's being revealed. And that's why I changed it to the name of revealing. I'm going to reveal some beautiful piece of artwork out of this room. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole, that's what I've been doing. That's why I would suddenly now the walls brick and slowly, you'll see it slowly change. And it's not going to happen all in one day. Everybody wants it all to change in one day. It happens yeah. over time. And a yeah. little bit of time as you, as you get I got another good one. Um, Becky, you mentioned you felt sick as you released. Can you elaborate more on that? What is nausea? What was it? Nausea? Was it loss of energy? Uh, thanks for sharing. Yeah, all of that. It was everything. It <laughs> seemed like um, the more I release, and, and I think I was, you know, kind of releasing from the lower emotions for sure. You know, I just was stuck in that lower. A lot of I just, start. Yeah, I just was fo so focused on getting rid of everything that I, I just kind of stayed there in those uh, in apathy, grief, and fear. And, and uh, as things came up, I remember one uh, specifically running into somebody from my past and um, spending about an hour with this person. And I went home releasing on, on that relationship. And I... I remember um, puking my guts out for two days wow. Wow. Uh, over that. Yeah. yeah. That, and we've had people do that. Uh, you know, people just start puking up stuff and then yeah. let a bunch of stuff go. Chris, have you had any experiences like this? Getting uh, sick? I, I did. It was shortly after, shortly after the weekend. Um, I was doing a lot of releasing. I was, I was getting one here and there and here and there. And then one night I was in the shower and I just, I had this huge one and then I got out and I couldn't eat dinner and I was like I was sick all night my stomach was upset all night and it was just like I felt like I was coming down with the flu the body aches and everything it lasted for about a day and a half maybe two days but for no explanation there was there was no reason for me to be sick it was just it was that because it was so, so huge mm -hmm. it took so much out of me you know when it came out and then when it's gone a few days later how did you feel when I when it was gone, and yeah, after a few days later, I I went back and I looked at the situation that I released on, and it didn't. There was no impact. There was yeah. no emotion attached to it anymore. It was yeah. just like it was just like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. You know, it's like one of those memories that somebody brings up, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. You yeah, know? just why doesn't this bother me anymore? It's just yeah. a bother me. Yeah. That's yeah. So, okay, awesome. Um, Cairo, do you got any more for me? Uh, just the ones that were in there, so that's it. Okay. Now, uh, hey Becky, what do you attribute your initial success with energetic modeling? Why do you think it works so well? Um, I think because by Sunday in that workshop, I think I was feeling so good. You know, um, I had released 
what I felt, what I was feeling at that moment, you know, I just felt really free. And then we had done that meditation before on all the, we were in on Sunday, we were all in the cap emotions, right? You were, mm-hmm. we were focused on all the cap yeah, emotions. Yeah, I, I love to take you guys there at the end of the weekend. And yeah, so- by Sunday night, we were feeling awesome. And we did that meditation. You t- I mean, we were just, I think the reason I was able to manifest was because I was feeling so good. Yeah, the feeling good is the attractor. And so in the beginning, if you think about something you want to attract and you feel really heavy, you're probably, you're going to push it away. But then the releasing and moving through that and getting to the point where you actually feel good, you don't have to force yourself. You don't have to state pump yourself. You don't have to lie to yourself. That's what the pushing is. And you actually get to the point where you're just relaxing. You feel good. That's when you start becoming an attractor for that energy, for that experience. Um, So that's, that's the whole point. Energetic modeling is to embody the the good feeling while releasing the, any resistance to it. Yeah. Um, And in an extreme way. I know this, this, can I share this one release I had that was really, Mm -hmm. it had really affected my life and I didn't realize how much it had affected. I mean, from the time I can remember, I cannot stand the sight of stitches. When I see stitches or blood, I, when I had my tonsils out <laughs> in the hallway. <laughs> the like, the hallway. And she was yeah. out on the floor in the hallway of the hospital. So. Yeah, and I just thought that's just who I am. I don't know where it came from. I was born that way, um, and and for whatever reason, in the middle of you know all this releasing and stuff, I remembered when I was how old was I? Three or four years old. My our older brother climbed this is how unsupervised and chaotic our home was. We had an, we had an ax on the top of the refrigerator. Why? Who puts an ax on the top of the refrigerator? I don't know, but we had an, it was a hatchet or an ax. I don't know the difference. He climbed up there. He was four. I was three. Climbed up there and took the ax and he, he was, and mom was asleep and he went out into the garage and he was hitting uh, this wooden horse, you know, the wooden horses where you, you know, he's hitting the wooden horse with this ax, right? And I thought, oh, you're gonna get in trouble. I remember thinking, you get in trouble, stop. And I put my hand in the way to stop him and the ax came down and almost shot my, you know, he hit my finger. I remember looking down and my finger was hanging there, you know, and, uh, you know, of course they're screaming, yelling, mom wrapped a towel around it, but the blood was coming up you know, and ever since then, that little, you can't even barely see the scar, but it's super sensitive. And I, and I had this giant release on that incident, that event that changed, like, it was, it was like a massive release, you know, on how crappy that felt that day. Uh, And it just has, like, now, I mean, not, not a lot of incidences have happened since then, you know, where people are bleeding out or anything like that, or I see people with stitches, but I don't have that charge on it anymore. You know, like I couldn't let people touch my finger, you know, it was just, there was so much emotion attached to it that, you know, I, I, and so like people can talk about blood and I don't get this like, you know, feeling like I used to just like start to like, um, recoil and I'd get nervous and agitated and pretty soon I'd be on the floor, right? Passed out. Yeah. Um, and it, I don't have, I'm not having that reaction anymore. It's funny. As you told that story, I realized I had a charge on it. I had to release it. Now I'm fine. <laughs> I was like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> no, I, now it's, now I thinking about it and it doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah. I don't think but, you were alive yet though. No, but I've, I've heard the story before and I remember being sensitive to it and I know ne- I'd never released it. So as you told it just now, I released it. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, Interesting. And then, uh, and so, so good. You weren't around either yet, Chris, were you? No. No, No, but, you know, like she got hit by a car when I I was with her when she got hit by a car. I had to release on that too. Yeah, you've seen a few things, huh? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just like growing up, there was so much chaos and there was no supervision and this feels like, you know, life was just happening all the time. And I had to, you know, be in control to stop these major things from, you know, yeah. happening. I, I remember. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, I remember Jim blew up his hand once. Um, tried to make a bomb. Oh my gosh. Yeah, blew up his whole right. hand. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Uh, um, okay, awesome. We, I think we have one more I haven't read here. Um, where, let me see here. 
Did I read this one? I'll say, tell me if I've read this once from Phil. Hey, Brian and Becky, uh, when you release reveal in relation to your judgments towards other people's behaviors and how they make you feel in general, have you experienced behavioral change in them? Yeah, yeah. I already read that one. Um, so I think we've been through them all. All the questions are in the Q&A, guys. Uh, it was a great, uh, great, and it's actually been an hour and a half, so it's about the time we should end the call. Um, it was great having you on there. It was great inviting Chris on a little later. Um, so I wanted to center on Becky and her story for a little bit. Um, Guys, I, uh, um, it's been a very, very, in my opinion, this has been very awesome for me. I've been really enjoying going through these stories and all these memories coming up. If you guys really want to uh, experience revealing, uh, and then the Revealing Masterclass is next weekend. Get signed up. And uh, I'm going to go through and take you guys through tons of teachings. I'm going to take you through tons of, um, uh, uh, we'll go through some releases. We'll go through teachings. We'll break stuff down. It's going to be two full days rather than an hour and a half. You'll have lunch breaks and all that kind of stuff, but it's going to be powerful. So if you're stuck in these areas and you have old family traumas you want to work on, you have resistance to stories with women, anger, you have frustrations coming up, and you, you think that letting go of that pain and that emotion is going to change you, then get involved in this class. Check it out and, and see what it can do for you. Uh, the link is in the chat box currently. You can see it there. And let's see you. Uh, I want to see you on the calls, guys. Now, um, Chris, Becky, Becky, Chris, uh, is there anything you want to say in closing to this? Um, I don't know. I, um, I think the one thing that's really, I think, uh, was a motivation for me to do this was just to seeing the change in you. You know, like you were my smelly little brother. So... <laughs> You know, I mean, I just seen just you become this, you know, person that's, you know, you just have a lot of wisdom and I, I've just seen you have an impact on people's lives. And I mean, nothing personal, but you know, uh, you were my little brother. So um, yep. I, I totally understand. Seeing... I, was a, I was an awkward social mess. I was super sickly. I couldn't relate to people. I was super antisocial. Yeah. I mean, you really weren't smelly, but I'm just saying, you know, just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I remember running into somebody at work and I told you this story and, um, you know, it turns out that they knew you, they had been to one of your, your classes and, uh, they were just like, Oh my gosh, you're Brian's sister. Uh, wow. And I thought, wow, yeah, I'm just, yeah, he's just, he's just my brother, but I didn't realize what an impact that you were making on other people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to, you know, when you're learning and you're coming up, you can go to your family and you can say stuff like, Hey, check this out. But they're, yeah, yeah, you're, you're my smelly little brother. What's the point? <laughs> you know? Um, but then, and so I knew I had to completely change my life before I could really truly invite you guys into it and see what I was doing. And uh, because anywhere along the process, people, it's hard for people to see the new version of you. You have to have, but once you get there then you can invite them up, it's with you to go do the work with you then then they're, they're like oh this is interesting but in the beginning they first they, they don't see they take them a while to see you as a different person and that's the, you ultimately got to give them that space yeah um, and and then maybe it's not for them not everybody's going to join with you, and that's okay too um and so that's, that's kind of where i was at you know I, I i had to become it before i could invite somebody else to join me in it in the shift and that's why I live in this beautiful house in Los Angeles and I have all this nice stuff and I travel the world and all stuff I never, I could hardly dream of back then, you know? Um, um, and I'm glad I'm in this place during this COVID period because it really allows me to help more and more people um, mm -hmm. during this period. So, it's and been how a lot of uh, reveal, I've had a lot of opportunities to release, you know, just mm -hmm. because of this quarantine. Quarantine's huge for releasing. It's such a, it's a releasing goldmine. Yeah. And, and, and ladies, how has your relationship and stress been during COVID? Unlike other, uh, how's it been using really having releasing as a tool during this whole COVID situation? How's your, how's your life been? I think it's uh, a huge opportunity. Yeah. The whole, the whole time I've been home, I've been, I've been doing your classes and I've been finding ways to improve my life instead of sitting around looking out the window and being depressed in my pajamas, like these people are talking about thinking this is an opportunity to do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want, you know? I have more time to release, I have more time to read, I have more time to expand, you know? Um, I think people are wasting their time. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I am the same way. Like I've loved it. I, I have absolutely loved the time and, uh, you know, it's just so exciting for me to, um, finally get to do some of the things that I really enjoy doing and things that make me happy. Like, um, two years ago, I couldn't have told you what made me happy though. See, that's the difference in the releasing now. It's like, I'm starting to find things that really light me up, you know, and, and make my day better. And like your gardening. And my garden. Yeah. Like that. Instagram. Is you doing that Instagram? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the name of it? Uh, watch me wet my plants. <laughs> I love it. Watch me wet my plants. Is her Instagram if you want to follow her uh, gardening pics and her flowers <laughs> and that stuff. So make sure to check it out. Uh, I came up with that name <laughs> with help from them. We all were brainstorming. So. Um, so guys, check it out. Watch me wet my plants on Instagram. Yeah. And uh, with that said, I want to thank you both for being here. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you ladies want to see some of the comments, make sure to check out the Facebook page after this goes up and uh, see some of the comments. And make and everybody, people will be on there responding to them. Uh, if we put this on YouTube, make sure to comment there too. Like, subscribe, do all that great stuff. If you haven't, if you're on YouTube, uh, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. I'm not sure where this video is going. Marketing team handles that. Um, uh, uh, so a lot of people are saying they can relate. They're saying thank you. Yeah, send my sister some love, guys. Let them know because they were, you know, this is uh, this is new for Becky. Becky wants to ultimately, at some point in her life, you want to be a coach. And we we're talking about bringing her on to do some stuff with us to train her and stuff like that. But she, um, you know, she's got to get used to being on videos and stuff. And so a lot of releasing <laughs> material here. So, uh, so send her some love so she can get used to it. She's she's doing a great job and. Um, and guys, we love you all. You, you've been awesome today, but we have to go and enjoy the sun today. It's a, it's a beautiful day outside and uh, it's Saturday. So with that said, um, uh, take care and remember only the confident really live. Thank you, ladies. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> take Thanks. care, everybody. Bye. 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 I can't believe he did that. <laughs> Not every, <laughs> we're still on, we're still on.